Hello friends, this video on P block elements part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let's talk about some important compounds of nitrogen family. The first one is dinitrogen, that is N2. They are the VIPs of the nitrogen family. The other is ammonia. Then we have oxides of nitrogen. Nitric acid is another important compound of nitrogen family. We have phosphorus. In phosphorus, we'll discuss about the allotropic forms of phosphorus. We'll talk about white, red, and black phosphorus. Phosphine is again important compound of a nitrogen family. Phosphorus halides. There are two kinds of phosphorus halides we'll be discussing: phosphorus trichloride and phosphorus pentachloride, and oxoacids of phosphorus. So these are some of the important compounds of nitrogen family that we'll be discussing in this chapter. The first is dinitrogen, that is N2. This is the first compound. And let's talk about the preparation of dinitrogen first. Commercially, how do we prepare? Commercially, we prepare by li liquefaction and fractional distillation of air because we have seen that air has huge amount of dinitrogen. So commercially, so this is commercially man. Is a commercial method. What we do is we do liquefaction and then fractional distillation of air. But this involves huge apparatus cost. So in the lab we use other methods. We'll talk about that. So if you see the liquid nitrogen, the boiling point is what 77 k and for oxygen the boiling point is 90 k so there is a difference in the boiling point right for these two components these two this is nitrogen and this is oxygen and these two compound actually is a major part of the atmosphere so using fractional distillation you can actually separate them because there is a difference in the boiling point Right. So since nitrogen boiling point is lower, it distills out first, leaving behind my liquid oxygen. Correct. That is a commercial way to prepare dinitrogen because this earth, earth, if you talk about this atmosphere, this atmosphere has mostly oxygen and nitrogen. There's a difference in the boiling point of oxygen and nitrogen. So we take advantage of the difference in boiling point of oxygen and nitrogen and use fractional distillation process to filter out nitrogen from the air. But since this involves huge apparatus cost, you use some other way in the lab to prepare the nitrogen. So in the lab, the nitrogen is prepared by treating NH4Cl with sodium nitrite. NaNO2. When you treat, when you react this two compound, NH4Cl and NaNO2 both in aqueous medium what you get is nitrogen gas and water molecule and sodium chloride. So whatever you get is nitrogen it has small impurities also. This is impure actually. This has small impurities and impurities are generally NO and HNO3 these impurities. So these impurities actually can be removed by passing the gas through sulfuric acid so pass through sulfuric acid and this sulfuric acid should also contain potassium dichromate Okay, so this is one way. most common way you have this ammonium chloride and sodium nitride. When you react, you get N2, it has some impurities which can be removed by passing through sulfuric acid and potassium nitride. The other way, this is the first way in the lab. The second way to prepare this nitrogen, dinitrogen in the lab, is by thermal decomposition of ammonium dichromate. Right. So this is uh, potassium dichromate K2Cr2O7. 
so we'll say ammonium dichromate that is nh42 cr2o7 so we'll do a thermal decomposition we'll heat it this becomes nitrogen gas some water molecule will come out and some cr2o3 will come out so this is also one way to prepare nitrogen in the lab if you want very very pure nitrogen then you can obtain this by thermal decomposition of sodium or barium azide so you have barium azide BaN32 this one if you heat it you get barium plus 3N2 this is a pure nitrogen so there are different ways to prepare nitrogen commercially you use fractional distillation of air that comes out to be cheaper on the large scale but in the lab we use uh, all these three methods to prepare dinitrogen once we have prepared dinitrogen we should we, we are looking for the properties of this dinitrogen the first is it is colorless there is no color i showed it a gray color but actually there is no color so no color you can't show on the screen you won't see it but this is a colorless it is odorless there is no smell this is tasteless there is no taste also and this non toxic and it is a gas so it is colorless odorless tasteless non toxic gas correct so if you think in front of you there's so much nitrogen because atmosphere has almost 70% nitrogen and this nitrogen you can't see because it is colorless you can't smell it it is odorless you can't taste it because it is tasteless it is not causing you any harm it is non toxic and it is gas so even if you don't remember thing that you are surrounded by nitrogen and this properties will by default come in your mind let's talk about some more properties of uh, dinitrogen so it has two stable isotopes two stable isotopes one is my n14 the other is my n15 they are two stable isotopes of this dinitrogen plus the solubility is low in water it has low solubility in water these are all properties of dinitrogen experimentally seen almost uh, 23 cm square per liter of water very low uh, solubility at uh, an stp 273 kelvin one bar pressure because solubility depends on temperature and pressure so it's good to mention the temperature and pressure at which you are trying to show the solubility it has low freezing point and low boiling point low freezing point it has low boiling point and the boiling point is almost 77k very less and that's why it is in gas form it is inert at room temperature please note inert at room temperature room temperature is a key here why inert because it exists in this form there is a triple bond here and the bond enthalpy is very high it needs very high energy to break this bond so typically it is inert at room temperature but its reactivity increase with increasing temperature but the reactivity increase with increase in temperature right so at a, since i am telling the reactivity increase in the increase in temperature when you are able to supply enough energy to break this bond so at this high temperature it reacts with metal to form ionic nitrites and also it reacts with non metal to form covalent nitrides so this forms metallic nitrides with the metal it also forms 
covalent nitrides with non-metal. Example is lithium plus nitrogen gives Li three N or magnesium plus nitrogen gives Mg three N two. Okay. Now this nitrogen will also combine with or react with hydrogen at high temperature in the presence of catalyst. to form ammonia. So nitrogen will react with hydrogen at high temperature to form NH3. Okay. So this nitrogen will also react with uh, oxygen at high temperature. React with oxygen again at high temperature. At high temperature. To high temperature is almost 2000 Kelvin here to form nitric oxide. The reaction will be N2 plus O2 at a very high temperature gives two nitric oxide. So, what we have seen the properties of this nitrogen, colorless, odorless gas, it has two stable isotopes, solubility is low in water, freezing point, boiling point, everything is less. It is typically inert at room temperature because this bond is pretty strong, triple bond. But at high temperature, it is reactive. It reacts with metals, it reacts with non-metals, it reacts with hydrogen, it reacts with oxygen. Okay, let's see the uses of this uh, nitrogen, dinitrogen. First is it is used to manufacture ammonia. Manufacture. Ammonia and that is used as fertilizers. It is also used to prepare industrial chemicals. Industrial chemicals. It is used to create inert atmosphere. For example, for this reaction, reaction to happen, you want inert atmosphere. So this says. This nitrogen is uh, non-reactive at room temperature, so it, it is used to create inert atmosphere also. It is used as refrigerant in the fridge. In the refrigerator, it is used as refrigerant. It is used in cryosurgery. In cryosurgery, what we do, we, for example, there's a mole or some infection here then this uh, very uh, low temperature is produced at this spot by this nitrogen okay? the pressure nitrogen is uh, hit in this area and a very low temperature is produced and that kills the bacterial or fungal infection so at cryosurgery the surgery which takes place at a very very low temperature this nitrogen is used We'll take some numerical. Write the reaction for the thermal decomposition of sodium azide. Sodium azide is what? NaN3. So when you heat this, you get sodium and 3 by 2 nitrogen. This is the gas. So this is the reaction for the thermal decomposition of sodium azide. Why is nitrogen less reactive at room temperature? We have seen that nitrogen has triple bond. The bond enthalpy is very high. That means very high temperature is required to break this triple bond. So at room temperature, nitrogen is less reactive. But at high temperature, when this bond breaks, nitrogen becomes reactive and react with metals, non-metal, hydrogen and oxygen. Thank you. Visit examfa.com to watch more videos. Attempt free online tests, get pre-study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.